Hello everybody, I'm Nora Burrows. I put this um, kind of strange piece together here a very long time ago. I'll show it to you in full in a minute. It's actually one of the first pieces I ever made. And I kind of had this vision, but I didn't know what I was doing or how to construct it. I wasn't following a pattern. And so when I completed this kind of middle part here, I just wasn't really happy with it. And so I let it be for a long time to try and figure out what to do. And recently I found it digging through for some other things. And what I think I would like to do with it is finish it. I want to make it into a baby quilt, which if you look at the materials, which we will in a second, they're not very baby-like, um, but I do have some other kind of novelty babyish fabrics that I think will go nicely with the with the fabrics in this piece. My Quilt Guild makes quite a few ABC quilts every year. All the Guild members donate ABC quilts, which are quilts for babies and kids uh, in need. This I think would be a great quilt for that. So that, that's how this is gonna end up. I think it could be really cute. It has a lot of potential. Let's take a closer look. Here is the existing center piece. What I'd like to do is to take this bird fabric, this is William Morris fabric, and do a little border right along the outside. Then, just to make it a little bit more kid friendly, I'm gonna take some of these novelty prints in greens and browns and do little maybe four inch squares, just a border along the outside. And then I'd like to use this bird fabric that ha again has the greens and the browns as a final border. Here, I only have tiny pieces of this left, so I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to be able to get out. They're all kind of various strips of different sizes, but let me sew some of these pieces together and add it on. I did not have enough of this William Morris bird print to go all the way around, so I used this kind of wheat printed fabric that is similar in tone to the bird fabric. And I actually really like it. Um, they say that the best thing artistically for your quilt is to run out of fabric. And in this case, I think, uh, I think that worked out well. I'm gonna cut out some of the squares. I think I'm gonna do four and a half inches and sew those novelty fabrics kind of to make strips around the outside. I am exceptionally happy with how this is working out. The border is attached. The, the square border, those are four and a half inches unfinished. They'll be four inches finished. And I did obviously um, every other one dark and then every other one light. And the dark ones I switched between kind of that gray or the um, green teal and the brown. The corners here, the way the measurements worked out, these are not full squares. Um, so they're just kind of like little rectangles in the corners, which doesn't bother me at all. I think it's totally fine and you don't even really notice. Next, I want to add a border of this brown fabric here. I think this is a recreation fabric. I got it secondhand, so I'm not sure, but I'm going to do small borders around the sides, two and a half inches, and then larger borders along the top and the bottom, four inch borders, uh, to give it a little bit more length so it's not so square. And this is the top that's done. I am going to finish the quilt in this video. Uh, it's hard to see the brown border against the floor there. Um, but I, th I think it's gonna look good and I'm going to trim it in green. I'm gonna do the binding in green. The measurement right now is 50 by 52. I usually like my baby quilts to be a tiny bit bigger just so that they can age with the child, um, especially charity quilts so that they, the child can use it for as long as possible. But um, I think I, I miss estimated exactly how big it was gonna be with the border. I would have liked to have the border I think be a little bit wider and longer. But this is fine. It's certainly a perfectly good size baby quilt. It's even still on kind of the larger side for a baby quilt. So let me um, go ahead. I'm going to do my quilt sandwich and then I'm going to do something that I have never ever done before, which is I'm going to, instead of put a binding on, I'm going to turn the back to the front. And I don't know how I'm going to like that, but, um, but let's go ahead and give it a try. Here I have my quilt sandwich. I've spray basted this together and I've cut my backing to be one and a quarter inch larger than my front. Now again, I've never done this before, but instinctively speaking, I think what you do is you fold this over to meet the edge of the quilt. Here, let's get a little closer. All right, so you'd fold this over for edge to edge to meet the quilt and then fold it over again. And I'm gonna put my wonder clip, I'll clip along as I go 
Um, but ultimately, and this is the other thing that I'm gonna do different than what I typically do, is I am going to machine quilt right along the edge here. Now I have not machine, machine bound a quilt um, in a very long time, probably years, uh, but I have a bunch of other projects going right now and I just don't wanna take the time to hand bind this. Now the quilt is not quilted. This is something that I do um, differently. Usually what I do is I'll quilt a little bit on the quilt, then do my binding and then finish quilting. In this case, this is not quilted at all. I'm going to do my binding first because I just want to get this nice and tucked in there and then I'll go ahead and machine quilt it on top. I'm going to put these wonder clips all around the whole thing and then top stitch as close to the edge as close to the edge right here as I can, right on top of the green, as close as I can get, all the way around. And then the backing, as you can see, just came to the front. Now when I get, now when I get to the corner here, what I'm going to do is just keep going along, just like I've been doing. As you can see, I put a wonder clip over here, just like this, continuing on all the way to the edge here. And then I will fold this over just like I've been doing. Seam edge to meet the edge and then flip it over again. And so this won't be a mitered corner. I wonder if you could miter it. Um, I think you can miter it somehow, but I don't really know how to do that, but if you look it up on YouTube. Now the other thing about this um, fabric here, this green fabric, it's flannel, which is great. It's gonna be nice and cozy for a baby quilt. Um, but aesthetically speaking, this green doesn't quite go with the rest of the quilt. It actually looks better on camera than it does um, in reality, but a couple things. Number one, I wanted to use what I had, and this piece was big enough that I didn't have to piece the back. I could just use the full piece and then flip it to the front, so easy breezy. And in terms of the coloring, it is a little bit off, but I actually think it looks good. Um, you know, there's so many different greens in this piece um, that, that I think it'll be fine. I've sewn my binding on. I think it looks pretty good. I was able to really get right along this edge here pretty close and even here I might want to um, take a couple stitches on, on the edge just to secure that because I got a little too close um, but I think in all in all it looks pretty good. I also began to quilt this piece. I did stitch in the ditch all the way around the brown border as well as the green border, the outside of the green border and the inside of the green border. So I'm going to I'm going to let this be for today's video. I'm going to hang it on the quilt stand so you can see how it looks kind of in full and it's complete enough for you to see, you know, see it as a finished product, but I will go in uh later and sew some some lines in the seams kind of every so now and then along these squares just to secure them in place. In addition, I'll also sew along these green pieces here, stitch in the ditch as well. Let's take a look at this piece hanging up. Here it is, I really love it. It came out better than I expected. You always know you have a great quilt to give when it's one that you end up really wanting to keep. So hopefully this will keep some baby nice and cozy and happy with lots to look at. Here's a closer look at some of the pieces. Now in terms of the quilting, how it's very common to do the pantograph where you're doing quilt, you know, decorative quilting over the full top of the quilt. The reason that I kind of veer away from that is one, that's, that's challenging to do on my domestic machine. However, it's possible. Um, or you could do something more simple on your domestic machine like straight line quilting, things like that. But the reason I don't and the reason that I prefer to do the stitch in the ditch is because it really allows um, you know, these, fa these fabrics to pop. So when you end up with the quilting, the decorative quilting all on top of the fabric, in my opinion, it mutes the fabric a little bit. It dulls the look of the fabric. And for me, so much of the joy of making these quilts is in the fabric itself. So these fabrics here, this 
this background fabric is an Adidas sitar, and this is a great fabric. It has things like these birds and acorns. It's, it's a great background. So this is an Adidas sitar of laundry basket quilts, as is this piece here. This is a William Morris, and as we talked about, the bird fabric is also a William Morris. And I think these fabrics, which I love, this is some of my favorite green ever, um, but I think that that's a recreation fabric from around the 1800s, but don't quote me on that. I'm not I'm not a hundred percent sure. I often shop in the kind of recreation section But they frequently have other things in there as well. So it's hard to know what's why I think this is a, a um, Recreation fabric as well Here's one final look at this beauty. Thank you for joining me. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time